The most popular video that I've made and put on YouTube is the one where I made a deer antler bowl. So I decided I would make another one and maybe, you know, maybe this one will be better and a little different. So we're going to start off with a, a Walmart plastic bowl, piece of old crappy wet wood. That's for the plug and I just a whole mess of odds and ends of deer antler pieces and scraps and a whole thing full of deer antlers right there and uh, now I'm going to, going to put a face plate on it I use a centering ruler it's you know got a zero on the center and scales on each side so it's pretty even you know like it's uh, it's ten oh let's see three and a half there and three and a half inches there and you just Center it you know, where you want to, and there's your center. Do the same thing here. Easy, easy, easy peasy. So basically, you come in here and several ways to do this, but um, this particular one, I know I'm going to cut it way down, so I, you know, I don't have to be that close. So I'm going to use some because this is pretty crappy wood. I will use some long, long screw. And what I try to do. In. Not very traditional, but you notice I'm trying to put them in at just a little bit of an angle. So if they do pull, it's a whole lot harder. Oh. And then we're back. Alright, this uh, plug feels like nothing now. It's been in the toaster oven, which you see back there, which you can pick those up for almost nothing or even cheap at Walmart. Uh, it's been in there, oh golly, at 100 degrees, that's the lowest setting it has for about 18 hours. Now, you remember this was 70%. So we're going to go back here and we're going to go to uh, C, the, the B, the same, same one we had. It was 70%. So we're going to go in here and see what we got now. So I got my plastic bowl, and what I did, I found the center of it, and I'm going to go ahead, and I got that center marked, and I'm going to go ahead and put my plug in the center, and I put a screw in it, and the purpose of that screw is just to hold it in the center. Alright, that's all you do there. Now, I'm going to begin to place my deer antlers inside here. It may take a little while, and I'm gonna, and I'll take it and and hot glue them to the edge of this right here. Fitting these antlers in into this bowl is not quite as easy as one might think. Uh, you, you do want some randomness about it. You don't want it to be, you know, symmetrical, but at the same time you. You want to get as many as you can in here so you, you don't uh, have to use too much resin. All right, I've got uh, got my deer antlers all in it, and I'm sitting in here in this coffee can just in case that screw leaks. But what I'm going to do now, this is something I had, haven't done before, but I'm going to do it this way anyway. I'm going to fill this with sanding sealer. And then I'm going to drain it out and let it dry. Now I put it in here, but this is what I use my resin in because this will also tell me how much resin I'm going to need. So I'm going to go ahead and pour this in. Fill it totally up. going to 
going to take about one and three quarters to fill it. I'm going to let that sit there for a while, then I'm going to drain it. And I'm going to do something else right here. I'm not 100% sure I should, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I'm going to put this in a pressure pot for a little while. Just like it is. And the idea, maybe, is to push the sealer in and the air out. I'm going to just let that sit there for all 30, 40 minutes. And I'll take it out and I'll drain that back out and we'll let it dry overnight and uh, hopefully tomorrow we'll be able to mix some resin. So I'll catch you later. Okay, this has been here about 45 minutes now. So, you know, that's probably ought to be plenty. see if any of it soaked in. Notice, noticeable. I mean, I can't tell just a little bit at a time. Noticeable amounts anyway. Okay. There you go. Whoa! Hey, i got to bring a camera over here. Look at this. I'm going to show you something. Look at that. Holy catfish. Now that's getting the air out, but that may be in the sealer. I don't know. Okay, I've got uh, I got this out of the pressure pot, and it, uh, it looks real good. I notice that some of the sealer is not quite dry in the bottom, so I uh, I put it in a toaster oven for a minute. But I don't I'm not sure that was such a good idea because I noticed that the plastic started to move. So I took it out. I may take it outside and. Uh, Set it out in the sun up high. Uh, my dog may think those are bones, and I wouldn't want that. Okay, so I'm going to move on. Now this this board right here is a piece of silver leaf maple. So I have uh, taken two of the discs I normally use for bowls, and I've drawn two circles in it. Now uh, the big one is going to be the lip on the top, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I guess I can take these off because I've already got circles. Let me take those off real quick. All right. So this gives me the center in my circles. All right. This one's going to be the bottom, and I'll probably put a tenon on it and, you know, just clean it up. But the top one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm going to put a uh, trough about that wide all the way around. And I'm going to take the ends of the where the deer antlers attach to the, the head of the deer. Let me get one of them real fast. I'll show you what I'm talking about. You see right here where there's, there's a, you know, where the they detach from the head? Let me get over here where we get a, a better view. All right. Light may not be very good here. Anyway, you can see right here. Well, I'm going to take these. First thing I always do for a poor epoxy is I, I seal it. This, this may look like milk, but it's just a container. It's the uh, cellulose to Minwax uh, water-based sealer. I find it very good. I have zero problems with it. It's easy cleanup, and what this will do, hopefully, it will. 
whenever I do the epoxy in here, it just stop bubbles. Well, I'm going to pour just a little bit of epoxy for this afternoon. Here's the, uh, this is going to be, it's maybe hard to imagine, but this is going to be the lip for the bowl. It's going to sit right there, and uh, these are all like, I guess you call them the butt end of the antlers, to where they attach to the skull. Uh, I took and troughed this out, and I, I sealed it, and I painted gold inside. So I'm going to pour uh, clear epoxy in here, and if there's any left over, I'll put it in there. All right. <clears throat> I'm getting ready to uh, make a lid for this. Uh, that sounds a little premature, I know. But I'm going to catch you up on where I'm at. All right. Let's start here. I've got this. This is already uh, stained. This is going to be the base. That's, out of the way. That's going to be the base. This is this is a, you know a bowl just like what I've got. It's in the pressure pot now with handlers standing straight up and down. So the base is going to go right here. Now this next piece I've got made. Okay, I've got all these uh, butts of handlers in. Uh, this, this is actually a lumalite. I found out. I, I just grabbed the wrong thing, had a little luminolite left over. And that's the reason I had a reaction on the other one like I did, but it'll work out. Anyway, I got all these. This this is gonna be this is gonna be the lip going around, you know, the top of the bowl. So, you know, this'll all be cut out and this will be like either rounded or something. But first I'm gonna take it over to sander and knock all these high points down so that when I start to turn it I won't be, you know, hitting these high points. So that'll be the lip that'll go there. Now I'm gonna make a a lid, which will go here, and this will be, I, I guess for lack of a better word, like a finial. But what I'm going to do here, and I've got the worm screwed and everything all set up, I'm going to go ahead and, and trough this out about this wide all the way around. I'm going to take pieces of antlers and put them around like this. And then I'm going to put uh, epoxy with a, a like a, a light platinum, and the idea is to turn it from the back side and the front side to make it a see-through with this in the center. Now, I'm not in concrete on this. I may look and find something a little better. Anyway, that's the plan, my friends, and I'm getting ready to put this on the worm screw and trough it out, and then I'll catch you in a minute. All right, I'm getting ready to whittle, whittle this out, but first I thought I'm going to put on my heavier jacket. Yesterday I turned some with uh, short sleeves on, and you can see here where... You know, stuff hitting in a couple of places. I'm, I mean, I've, I'm of the age where this happens, unfortunately. Uh, some of you older gentlemen will understand it. So, if you see me wearing this jacket and gloves, you'll know why. So, I'm going to use a square cutter. Go ahead and whittle this out. I guess I better check my depth here. Like I said before, I don't want to end up with two pieces. All right, just a little more. Not much. Well, here is something that's, that's very interesting. A, a confirmation of a lesson I already knew, but let's see how we can explain this okay this this is going to be my lip here now when when I poured this uh, clear epoxy resin in my, my intention was just to let it sit but I noticed after about a half hour there was a lot of cloudiness and bubbles forming so I, I went ahead and put it in the pressure pot well with few exceptions they cleared up I mean it was like cloudy cloudy okay now here's part two when I poured this, I had some left over. I put some gold pearl in it, and I poured it into into this one. And I just let it sit. Look at there. Therein is a difference in using a pressure pot and not a pressure pot. Luckily, it's just a little bit, and it's at the bottom, and actually it's going to give it a very neat effect because I'm going to finish it up with uh, clear epoxy with blue pearl in it to the top. 
and naturally it's immediately going into the pressure pot for probably several several hours so there you go pressure pot is required my friends all right i've got everything out of the pressure pot now and all all three pieces are poured up uh, they, they, they actually turn out quite well the, on, the only uh, only flaw i see is where i use accidentally use aluminum here in the bottom which uh, aluminite does not like moisture at all, and evidently there was some in there. So it sort of looks like it sitting in a bed of froth, which well, I guess that would be all right. But there, there's no bubbles or voids in the other two colors. They look real good. I'll really know when I get this off. But uh, and uh, this is, this is going to be the lid, and it really turned out nice. I'm pleased with it. Uh, and this will be the, the lip around the top of the bowl. It looks good. It's, it's in clear, and of course there's the base, which I'm not going to do anything with, but it has a tenon on it, so it's ready to be glued on and ready to go. Okay, first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to take all three of these pieces and take a, a DA with some rough paper and knock down the, the high antlers. And the reason I'm going to do that is because when I first start turning it, I don't want nothing sticking up that, you know, that hits first and you know, causes a jar and maybe chip out. So it's just a lot easier to knock them down, you know. Uh, bone really stinks, but that's the way it is. So I'm going to do it right here in front of this vacuum cleaner, dust collector. Set this up and we'll get ready to do a little whirling. Wow. 
Oh, I wish I'd have built this second tower a long time ago. This thing's cutting pretty aggressively, so I gotta, I gotta make sure here. I sure don't want to go through. Yeah, look at there. Whoa! Less than a quarter inch. It's time to stop. It's who on bottom time, my friends. So, I purchased another. Uh, Another couple bottles of 2,000 pounds. They're called two ton epoxy, and that's what I use exclusively for this. For those who don't know, it's uh, it's what you use to put on knife, uh, you know, knife handles on, like you're you're gluing uh, wood or bone or something to steel. I've yet to ever have one break loose, so I know that stuff works quite well. All right, well, I've got to uh, get all set up here. Make sure that it didn't it go flying on me. And one thing I noticed here that I didn't uh, didn't mention, this was the bottom. And do you remember I, I put some stain down there? Well, when I started to, when I started to sit and rub it up, I, it was gumming up the sandpaper. So I said, whoa, that's been a couple days too. So I said, that, that's no good. So anyway, I took the forest for bit, a little one, quarter inch. And I just put a, you know, a bunch of little bitty things in there like that. Uh, yeah, just, just a precaution. Well, while the, uh, while the bowl was sitting up a little bit, I thought I'd go ahead and clean this ring up a little bit, not a whole lot. Get it ready to be glued on the other end. Um, Got to get my garb on here and then we'll... Uh, this is all, it's all, it's all good and stuck, but uh, I, I want to let it, I want to let it cure overnight before I start putting pressure on it.
I think I'm going to put a little cap of uh, walnut right here. Bring that up to about right here. And of course, this, this ring right here is it, going to extend out a little bit and it'll have, it'll have the groove right in there. You know, so this, I want this to fit flush in there. That may be hard to do. But I'm going to give her a try, good old college try. We'll see what happens. Now I think what I'm going to do is uh, it's, I'm going to call it a day. That's what I'm going to do. And I'll see you later. Bust loose right there. Don't need that. All right. <clears throat> All right. Hmm. I guess it's time to go ahead and put the top on it. Yep. Because if I don't, it's going to swarm on me. I'm going to use a parting tool and cut 
take the center out real fast. Probably help if I move my tool rest a little bit. <clears throat> Give him a little lid. Come in here and see if I can't uh, put a little lip right there. Go down and go get the air so I can keep this thing cleaned out. There's a little bit of cleaning in there. And I think this bowl will be ready for sandpaper. Maybe some CA glue. But I can handle it. <clears throat> Everybody knows it's that last cut that always gets you. Could use a little more, but I don't think it's going to get it. Well, since <clears throat> I know how much everybody loves sanding, I'd be somewhat remiss if I didn't, didn't show you guys a little bit of it. thing here and turn the tenon off. Nothing to it.
damage the end product. You may ask uh, what happened to the ring on top. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't like it. So I cut it off. I'll use that on top of another bowl or something like that. This has a, um, has a lid right here with a little deer ant on top. The bottom. I put three little legs on it. It has my engraving for my signature. The inside looks alright. Actually, I think the bowl turned out pretty good once I got rid of that ring. But I didn't like it, so I got rid of it. Sometimes you just have to uh, try things. Now, I thought it would look good with the big whip around it, but I, I, it just didn't. So there it is, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's been a, another adventure in the messing with deer antlers and so forth. So I want to thank you and subscribe. Tell my friends and all that kind of stuff. So we'll catch you on the rebound and keep them whirling.